Hi, so recently I was looking through my Instagram feed and I noticed that one of my old friends from high school was trying to at least sort of veggie-size one of my favorite Filipino dishes. So in case you didn't know, I'm half Filipino and one of the things that you grow up having in a Filipino household is something called lumpia, which is basically a Filipino's version of a spring roll. So there's lots of different variations out there. So hopefully I won't make any of the mamangs or aunties or lolas upset with what I'm trying to do with it. Um, but I was really inspired to give it a try to sort of veganize what is traditionally quite a meaty dish. You can have an all vegetable version and, and mine really is all plant-based obviously, but I'm going to be using a meat replacement, something that I've found fairly recently, um, found it in my supermarket, Sainsbury supermarket, and it's something that's becoming quite popular and that is Meatless Farm Company meat-free mints. So that's the first ingredient and that's about, let's see where this is on the 400 grams of that meatless meat. I've got one large carrot grated and I've got one large onion diced. So I, I'm not really sure I'm gonna use all of this onion. I'll probably use maybe about three quarters of this. I didn't really realize until I had chopped it all up that it was actually so much. I've got two cloves of garlic and that's gonna end up minced. I've got a tablespoon of soy sauce. I've got a teaspoon each of salt, um, garlic powder and black ground black pepper. I've got I've also got a little bit of a twist because normally when I'm making lumpia I would use this Filipino or oriental slash Asian seasoning called um, sarap but I can't use sarap because it's got some chicken or like chicken juice or something like that as a part of the um, I can't even I can't even think of what you would call it. I guess chicken stock is what you would call it. It's got chicken anyway as a part of the ingredients. Um, so because I can't use that, what I thought I'd do is take one of these veggie stock pots or half of one and add that to the mix as well. If you don't have one of these, if you have the sort of cube of more dry stock, I was going to try that as well. Maybe make a little bit of a paste with that with a little bit of of water so hopefully that all turns out right right so the first thing I'm going to do is get my skillet out and oh yeah there's going to be the use of quite a bit of vegetable oil so a little bit just for the preparation of the filling um, but also there's the actual frying of the of the lumpia after we've got that got them all rolled up so I'm going to go ahead and get this heat on and let about a tablespoon of vegetable oil heat up. Oh, somebody's passed by the window or something and Bernie's having a little bit of a moment. And now Andy's storming down the stairs to stop him. I think the drama is over. All right, so we're going to let that heat up. Give that a minute. While that's heating up, I'm just going to go ahead and get my packet open. Give you a closer look of what this looks like as well. Put it under that guy. I'm trying the uh, double, double video. So you can have a closer look at the actual cooking of things. All right. It's gonna take a minute to heat up. So like I was saying before, there are many variations of this recipe, different types of ingredients. You, you can do a more just all vegetable one with cabbage, maybe spring on, I'm not spring onions, maybe um, spring greens or something along those lines. But I wanted to do, I always liked my lumpia as the sort of more meaty version of lumpia. So that's why I wanted to try it with the 
meatless meat just to see if it would come out similarly. To be fair, it's not using very many really exotic ingredients. I mean, this should all these should all be things that you could find in your in your cupboard already or your refrigerator already. The meat-free meat might be the one thing that you haven't tried before, but I assure you it's pretty good. Corn products, I haven't seen that they have a vegan uh, mince product. So I was very happy to see this on the shelves of the supermarket. Right, so that's, that feels a little, it feels pretty hot. Let me do my water trick. Actually, it's not as hot as it, I thought it was. I'm hearing no sizzle. hot enough right so like I said I'm only going to be using about three quarters of this onion only because I didn't realize how much it was actually going to be that was kind of like a large onion so maybe a medium-sized onion is really what you want I probably should have weighed it to tell you in grams but oh well not that much of a science to be fair. I just don't want it to be overly oniony. What I'm going to do is uh, give this a stir, let this soften up, and then after that I'm going to add my meat-free mince. Actually, meat free mince isn't the next ingredient. It's going to be the, um, the garlic. But I think I've said this to you before, but if you haven't seen any of my other videos, a lot of recipes will tell you to sort of add the onions and garlic at the same time. But I've always had trouble with garlic burning whilst the onions are softening. So I tend to wait until the onions have softened up a little bit. Okay, these are looking pretty soft, starting to go a little bit translucent. So I'm gonna get my garlic in there, give that a little stir, and then we'll go ahead and get the meatless meat in. Let's see what fun that's going to be. I've only ever really used the meatless meat mints, meat free mints. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm really butchering the name there. No pun intended. I've only really used it in chilies and like bolognese. So I haven't really used it in a sort of loose kind of brown mixture. I'm very interested to see how it performs. Right, here we go. I'm just going to move that off the heat, but I think we're okay. You can see, it's very convincing looking. And having had this before in other recipes, I can say that it tastes good as well. See what the ingredients are on this stuff. Soya protein. Yeah, so that's the coconut oil. That's the main thing on there is the soya protein, which is not unexpected. Lumpia tends to be a little bit of a, a party food. You see it at big gatherings like at Christmas time or somebody's birthday party. It's not something you see on the menu every day. This is a little bit of a treat for us this weekend. Mostly because 
I was so intrigued. Oh, I think that um, there is one thing to note with this is I think it takes a little bit longer to brown than what you would see with uh, ground beef or ground pork. So don't be discouraged if it's not getting brown. Okay, what I'm going to do now is add some of that seasoning. So I've got my garlic powder, black pepper, and salt, a teaspoon of each. Make sure that's mixed, mixed in properly. This is the weird, the experimental bit, which is my um, my half half of a veggie stock pot. But only done half because we've already got salt and soy sauce in this recipe, so I didn't want things to get too salty. Starting to brown now as well, which is good news. You just have to keep stirring with this because you don't want it to stick. You don't want it to burn. I might just turn the heat down a little bit. Got that down to about medium heat now. All right, I'm going to go in with my soy sauce now. Better start. Oh wait, there's a big clump of veggie stuff. comes the soy sauce. All right, same thing here, get that all mixed in, and I'm going to go in with my carrot. I always used to think that making lumpia was like really hard. And, and it's not really, to be fair. So once I, once I actually learned how to do it, it's also a really nice thing to do with people. I find it's something, I've always found it something nice to do with my mom. We don't always enjoy a lot of the same activities, but the uh, rolling of the lumpia is something nice to do together. Sit and have a chat. All right, I'm gonna keep stirring this until the carrot cooks down a little bit. I'm actually gonna give this a taste as well. just to see what the mixture actually tastes like. Hmm, that's really nice. I actually think I'm gonna add a little bit more soy sauce to this, just because from a flavor perspective, I'm not sure I'm getting the right notes. It does taste good. Just a little more soy sauce. I say a little more, that's probably about another tablespoon. The grated carrot is starting to wilt down a little bit. And this is a filling for the, the, uh, the rolls that are actually going to be fried off. So there is more cooking that happens here. So everything doesn't have to, or can, it doesn't have to be super soft or anything like that. Right. So that is the end of the filling bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this aside so that it can cool down and it can be ready for our wrapper rolling. Okay, 
that will take a little while so I don't know see in about 20 30 minutes and then we can start rolling okay so while the filling for the lumpia is cooling I thought I'd go ahead and demonstrate a little bit of the preparation of the lump of the lumpia wrapper spring roll wrapper actually in this case so this is the um the brand I actually got of spring roll. I think it's something that you can actually find pretty easily in the supermarkets over here. I actually got this from an Asian slash oriental food store or a grocery store because I was actually looking for a different kind of roll. But I have used this before and it, it works perfectly fine. It's just not exactly the same type that I'm used to have se having seen growing up and, and having um, from the Filipino stores. So this is what it looks like. It, this is about 10 inches square and there were 30 of these in the packet and uh, it comes frozen so you obviously want to thaw that out first. It doesn't take long to thaw out at all and what I've done to separate this is sort of start splitting it, splitting the pack down the middle and then make those smaller and smaller until you're taking individual sheets apart. So you don't want to do this too soon in advance, um, sorry, too far in advance of actually rolling your, your lumpia. So you want to make sure that the, the filling is pretty cool before you start doing this. And what I'm actually going to do is take this and, and cut them diagonally because each of these 10 inch wrappers is actually enough to make two lumpia. So I'm just gonna fold that in half and take my kitchen scissors and cut on the diagonal. I'm gonna do this for all of these. I'm not sure if my filling is actually enough to use up all of these wrappers, but we are going to find out. actually coming to visit in August and I thought it would be nice to do another veganized Filipino dish when she's here. Okay, these are cut into very rough triangles and like I said they do dry out pretty quickly so I've got a nice clean wet paper towel there to sort of keep them from drying out too quickly as I'm rolling. Um, the next thing I want to do is grab, just grab a, a dish to start piling these up on. I'm going to get a tablespoon to get ready. I'm going to grab a few of these guys. I'm going to use a little bit of water. So if you thought this was going to need egg or something like that to make things stick, you were mistaken. Right, I've got mixture here, which has cooled down sufficiently. Sorry, not, well, it is a mixture, but it's my filling mixture here. I've got my wrappers here. I've got a dish to put them on and I have a tablespoon and some water. All right, so I'm just going to take a tablespoon and you can kind of judge, you can kind of sort of eye things up if you want them to be a little fatter. I think some people make when they're making them with meat, I think they actually start with raw meat, which is always a little bit 
dodgy. One, it's, it's me. And then two, like, oh my gosh, are you gonna actually gonna be able to cook it all the way through during the frying process? Okay, so I'm just, so I just rolled up a little bit. I'm gonna take these ends and tuck those in. And then right at the end here, I use a little bit of water. And ta-da! I'm not sure my mom would be proud of this one. It's a little bit sloppy. So I'm gonna try to neaten up these little wonky corners, but I know that this will taste just as nice. You can see that they're kind of longer than what you've probably seen as a spring roll. This is actually something that um, when you take to parties and stuff, there's never any leftover. So this is the part that I was saying was nice to do with somebody else. Nice to sit and share the load of wrapping five million of these because that's what you need if you're taking these to a party. Ooh, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but somebody is singing their little part out in the background. certain musician I live with. So as a measurement, it's probably about two level tablespoons of filling that's going into each one of these. Another thing my um, grandmother used to do was take um, the lumpia wrappers and wrap banana in it and then fry that as a kind of dessert. Eh, I could take or leave the fried banana. I mean, it was sort of exciting when you're a kid, but yeah, not my thing really. Okay, so I think I'm finding if I fold the sides in a little bit sooner than I was doing in the beginning, then there's less chance of escaping filling. Maybe not too level, maybe more like two heaped two tablespoons. I'm not doing so great with my measurements here. Okay, so instead of waiting until I get to the end, I'm going to fold these sides in now. Yeah, I think that's the ticket. Although these are still not as pretty as I'd like them to be. But they're not horrible. Every once in a while, you get um, somebody who does something horrible, like put raisins in the lumpia. And then you just kind of think, why would you do a thing like that? Oh, that makes me actually think of um, Filipino empanada as well, which is a little meat filled fried pastry. And I think that this would work for that as well, but that's another thing that people like to put raisins in every now and then. And you just gotta wonder, what kind of people are doing this? What is the problem? Why do we need raisins? I guess it's the whole savory and sweet thing. I do not like it.
Usually by the time I'm just about finished with wrapping is about when they start looking like I want them to look. So I think this is going to be the last one. A lot of times what happens at the end is you get one baby one or one really fat one because that's the way things happened with the mixture. And I think I'm going to have one really fat one. I'm just going to get the last few bits here. I'm going to roll a fatty. Right, so let me give you a gander of my egg rolls, uh, or lumpia, otherwise known as lumpia. There we go. Again, not the prettiest plate of lumpia, and it made a lot less than I was hoping it would. So if you were doing this for a party kind of situation, then I definitely say fill that out with some cabbage, one, or get another packet, at least one other packet um, to be able to do this with. Look at all these stupid wrappers I have. Not stupid, but just far too many. Right, so I am going to go ahead and get rid of some stuff here. And I'm gonna start getting my self ready for the frying part of the situation. Okay, be back in a minute. Okay, now we're ready for frying. So what I've done is I've taken two cups of vegetable oil and I've put that on a high heat on the stove top and that is nice and hot. I don't know if you could hear it popping a second ago, but that's because I sprinkled a little bit of water in there just to test how hot it was and it is definitely hot. So I've that, turned that down just a little bit to medium high because you don't want everything to sort of burn as soon as it touches the oil. And what I'm going to do is just gently get my lumpia into the, into the pan. So what you don't want to do is crowd the pan, be too impatient and have too many in at once. And I'll say if you're making this for some sort of party or something like that, you cannot do the frying really ahead of time because then as when you take them out, then they start to, they'll be crispy for a little while, but then they start to go a little bit floppy and they're not as nice. They are still edible though, but just not as nice. I'm gonna move these around a little bit. We've got space for maybe one more in here. All right, so I'm just going to let these cook, keeping an eye on them just because that wrapper is very thin and it is very easy to overdo these and get them a little bit too well done. Uh, I've got a bowl with some paper towel in just to soak up some of the oil when they're done. Should just take a few minutes on each side. I wouldn't say more than more than two or three minutes on each side. So if you had a, um, a deep fryer, I imagine you could manage these in there as well. Okay, I think these are looking pretty nice golden brown. It's hard to tell on the bottom side because it's a bit more transparent, but I think that they're okay. Yeah, this is very much a keep your eye on things kind of game. Can't walk away from these. Bubble, bubble, getting excited. Looks all right. Okay, here's the last batch. I 
I just suddenly thought about um, what I was saying earlier about needing to sort of have these fried f fresh wherever you're however or wherever you're having them and not sort of doing it ahead of time it they are actually very good for freezing not after they're cooked but before they're cooked so that you could do loads of them in one go and sort of break them out into packs and, and stick them into the freezer and bring them out as and when you want them my mom did that for me the last time she came to visit we had it was when I was still eating meat so it was a while ago but um but yeah we had like lumpia whenever we wanted it for a while which was really good all right and then we get to taste them in a second I'm excited about although from tasting the filling I'm going to admit that it's not exactly the same the next time what I'm gonna do is try another packet of seasoning another brand of seasoning called Mamacitas which I looked at the ingredients and there are no animal products in the ingredients for that one um, I did order some but it just didn't come in time for me to do this video so that might be something I report on uh, by the time I actually post this video so you know maybe that'll be maybe that'll make things taste a little bit nicer I have to say it does taste nice still it just doesn't taste exactly like the lumpia that I was hoping for and it might be um, might have something to do with the seasoning might have something to do with the filling but let's see what it's all what it's like all together I'm just gonna grab one of these. Ooh, they're still really piping hot, so you gotta be careful. I'm just gonna grab one of these from the first. Ooh, it's still really hot. Hot from the first ones. Let me just show you a couple of different views. They look really pretty, don't they? All lined up, ready to be devoured. I'm just gonna cut this in half. So let some of that out. And you can see some of the filling in there. What that looks like. And then I'm just gonna <laughs> through this. Hmm. Actually. take back what I said earlier this tastes really good I think mm, mm, mm. getting the wrapper around it and frying it up obviously made the difference now you would serve this with some dipping sauce I know my mom likes to serve it with sweet chili sauce I would have it with with sriracha you can serve it with soy sauce extra soy sauce to dip it in as well right so that is lumpia a filipino spring roll made with meat-free mints and a few other bits and pieces and i think it actually turned out really nice so i'm gonna go take these over to andy and we will probably devour them in about five minutes and that's it yeah have a good one <laughs>